blessed. We are blessed. Amen, amen, amen. Blessed in the city. Blessed in the field. Blessed when we come and blessed when we go. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Praise God. I want you to get your Bibles this morning. Go to the book of Proverbs, the 12th chapter and the 7th verse. Proverbs, the 12th chapter and the 7th verse. And let's read it together. I'm reading from the King James Version. Let's read it together in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for seeing you today. Looking forward to that uh, family affirmation Sunday and prayer on tonight. We're praying especially for our families and believing God to position us to prosper in this coming year. As he has caused us to prosper in years past. But we don't need to take it for granted. Amen. We have not because we ask not. And we need to continue in prayer concerning these things because Christ said men ought always to pray and what? And not to faint. Amen. Let's read it together. The word says, the wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. The house of the what? The righteous shall stand. Amen? Amen. Say with me, righteousness, righteousness. the path, the path. To, family to family prosperity. prosperity. Say it again, righteousness, righteousness. is the path, is the path. To, family to family prosperity. prosperity. Let's pray. Father, we pray that you would bless us as we look into this word. Give us ears to hear and hearts to receive what the Spirit of God has to say to the people of God. Cause your people to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Build us up and give us strength that is sufficient for this hour. We pray, Father God, that you would bring to our remembrance any illustration or revelation that would be beneficial for the edification of these, your people, that they may grow in understanding and in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Very often, as we talk about various topics, people look for something new, something different, something, uh, quote, interesting. And, uh, and very often, people are looking for that, that, that secret, that mystery, that, that, that thing that's going to help them to get beyond where they are and cross over into what they want to be and what they want to have. But God wants us to see, praise God, that uh, family prosperity is really very, very simple. And sometimes uh, people make things overly complicated. But um, I found that in life often the truth is not complicated, it's just inconvenient. Well, well. All right. But if we just accept the truth as the truth and follow it, uh-huh. it will work. Amen. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My right. yoke is easy. easy and my burden is what? light. And people are looking for various secrets to having a better family, a better uh, relationship with their children, with their husband, with their wife. But what God wants us to see is the foundation of prosperity in every area of life, including the family, is righteousness. And if we would just do right, well, live right, act right, our family would prosper. Amen. 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 He says, the wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. If both husband and wife are righteous and act right right. and do right Uh and live right, that house will stand. Yeah. If it don't stand, somebody, somebody. is not acting right. Amen. Somebody is not doing right. Amen. 
Amen. That's simple, but it's true. All of the things that are really bringing about division and divorce and so on and so forth are rooted in that one thing. Somebody isn't doing right. But what that means is if you do right and both of you make a commitment to righteousness, whatever's wrong, you can turn it around. So position in the family for divine prosperity begins with righteousness. And the reason people doubt the connection between righteousness and prosperity is two primary reasons people begin to doubt. They begin, see, you know, you're saying, you know, if I live right, do right, things going to prosper, I'm going to be blessed, my family going to be blessed. And, 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 but, you know, I, I'm kind of questioning it. And, and there are two reasons people do that. They often question it because they've observed the absence of material prosperity in the lives of many people they didn't know to be righteous. You know, I know people, I know somebody, you know, and they live holy, and I know they live right, and they act right, and they do right. Never heard them, you know, uh, say a cross word, and, and they love people. And, and I just don't see material prosperity in their life. I don't see them prospering. They, they struggle, they strain, and, and so that makes some people wonder about that connection between righteousness and prosperity. The next reason they've often observed the presence of material prosperity in lives people that they know are unrighteous. They know folk not living right. They know they're wicked. They know <laughs> they, they, they cuss, commit adultery, fool around, do all kind of wrong things. And they see them, you know, prospering materially. They drive the finest car, live in the finest neighborhood, you know, go to the finest restaurants. Uh -huh. So they say, hmm, how can these things be now? Because, you know, you know the righteous is supposed to be prospering and the wicked, you know, they, 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 they're not supposed to be like that. So, so is there really this connection? Well, the Bible addresses both of these things. Amen. Number one, the scripture acknowledges that some prosper materially, though their lives are wicked. Amen. Go to Jeremiah 12 and 1. Jeremiah 12 and 1, we're going to see that. The Bible acknowledges some people, they are prospering, though they live ungodly lives. And there's nothing new under the sun. So we got to take the word as a whole. And the Bible never said that people, praise God, in the world would never prosper. Amen. Amen. The Bible said God reigns on the just and the unjust. Yeah. So sometimes they were just in the vicinity of prosperity and it came down and hit them. When it rains, it's not really hitting or targeting anybody specifically. When rain comes, the rain didn't come to rain on you personally. The rain just fell over the vicinity and anybody that just happened to be there got wet. Well, that's the way it is sometimes. You know, people by and large, even the poor in America, are doing better than <laughs> the poor in certain other uh, third world countries. Amen. But it's not because they're righteous, it's just because they live here. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Praise God. You do better on social services and welfare here than some people do working in their own country. Amen. Amen. You get welfare here, you're going to get more than a dollar a day. But there are some places people work all day and get... A dollar a day. Amen. So you're doing better than them <laughs> just by being here, but it's not because you're righteous. The Bible acknowledges it. Jeremiah 12 and 1 says, Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I plead with thee. So God is righteous. Say, God is righteous. God is righteous. So even when things look wrong, remember, God is righteous. Yet let me talk with thee of thy judgment. He said, yeah, I know you're righteous, but I'm, I'm, I'm saying some stuff that's not seem to be adding up to me. Right. This is not calculating. So I, I'm just kind of questioning your, you know, your sense of justice here. Wherefore does the way of the wicked prosper? Why is it like this? Why are folk that's lying and cheating and stealing, you know, and being unfair to the employees, why they got that money? I'm, I'm wondering about that. And wherefore are all they happy that deal very treacherously? Uh -huh. Lord, it's not calculating to me. Now, what I want you to see is Jeremiah's question proves that it, it happened then just like it happens now. There are times that people live wicked lives and they experience material prosperity. Amen. Amen. But what the psalmist learned is that their prosperity is temporary. Is temporary in this life. Amen. Most of the time it doesn't last all the way through their earthly life. And it certainly won't last past their earthly life. 
but the saints will be prosperous throughout eternity. Amen. Glory to God. But their prosperity ends before or at the grave. And for that reason, the Bible said we're not to envy them. Look at Psalm 37 and 34. We're not to envy them because their prosperity is going to end before or at the grave. Amen. Psalm 30, 37 and 34. He says what? Wait on the Lord. Say wait on the Lord. And you're going to find that's what's tied to your prosperity, waiting on God. See, sometimes people begin to look at, listen, I'm struggling living right. You know, I'm trying to live holy. And I want to prosper. And see, there's more than financial prosperity. There's, 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 there's family prosperity. And see, some folk hadn't got to first base because they want a family. <laughs> to them, that's prosperity. Getting married. Getting a spouse. That would be prospering. Right. Amen? Amen? So they start looking around and they say, hey, I'm living holy, keeping myself unspotted from the world. Amen, somebody. Right. And I, I, I want to get married. I want a wife. I want a husband. And here this other person over here, they're not living right. And look, whoop, they married. Uh. So mm, maybe I need to compromise. Cut a few corners here. Hand out some samples. <laughs> <Lord. laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen, somebody. <laughs> Trying to get something to make themselves happy. But God said, hey, don't let doubt and don't let compromise seep in. Amen. Wait on the Lord and keep his way. Yeah. Wait on God and keep doing right. right. See, some people have sabotaged some of their future prosperity at, or they have delayed it because they didn't wait on God and they didn't keep his way. They started cutting corners. Right. So he said, don't do that. Wait on the Lord, keep his way, and he what? He shall exalt thee. Yeah. You don't have to lie. You don't have to steal. You don't have to cheat anybody. Just it, You may struggle for a while doing right, but it's not going to stay that way. Amen. The time will come where if you're not weary and doing well, you will reap if, 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 if. That's a conditional term. If you faint not. Well, what if you faint? You're not going to reap. If you faint not. And there, there are seasons for everything. There's a seed to plant. There's a season to plant, there's a season to cultivate, and there's a season to reap. Yeah. But if you keep cutting the season short, you never get to reaping. That's right. That's right. Amen, somebody. Yeah. If you plant your seed on Monday and dig it up by Friday, well, you, you're never going to get a harvest. Right. And then you're going to say, well, I'm going to put it back, I'm going to see if it'll work, I'm going to put it back in the ground again. Yeah. Give it another two weeks. Then dig it back up. Hmm? Then put it back in the ground again. Then pick it back up. Well, you're never going to get the harvest. You got to go through the process. Don't faint. But a lot of time what happens, people start the process, start doing what God wants, and then they, 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 they faint in the middle of it, and they stop, and then they stop, and then they stop, and then they stop, and then they stop, 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 stop. Huh? You go, you know, try to drive somewhere like that. Hmm? Try to drive to Jackson going, you know, 10 miles up 49 and then five miles back. Then another five miles forward, then two miles back. Then another three miles forward. How long is it going to take you to get to Jackson? <laughs> well, if your decrease is, you know, less than your increase, you will get there eventually you know, sometime next year. Praise God. <laughs> But what I'm simply saying, if you keep going forward, <laughs> uh -huh. huh? isn't that what we just saw? Yeah. You keep moving forward, you're going to get there. Yeah. So he says, wait on the Lord, keep his way, and he will do what? He shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are what? Cut off, you will see it. In other words, wicked stuff just not going to last. Right. Even people out in the world have found that, that even if they're not saved, 
if they, if they are consistent in doing other folk right. Their business is going to be more sustainable and it's going to last longer than people who cut in corners, cheating folks. Huh? I mean, if you're a mechanic and you tell, you know, you got people coming in and you, quote, fixing their car, hmm? you use a substandard part, you fixing stuff that they didn't ask you to fix, and say, well, you signed this sheet, so you got to pay for it. You know, they may go ahead and pay for it then just, you know, go ahead and be through with you. But how many know what's going to happen? They're not what? They're not coming back. So you made a little money, but in the long run, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna hurt yourself. So wicked stuff just does not last. Glory to God. And that's what's going to happen here. The wicked will be cut off. And the only word to say, he said, I've seen the wicked in great power, spreading himself like a bay tree. But it didn't what? It didn't last. It did not what? Last. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought for him, and I could not find him. But do what? Mark the perfect man, the blameless man. And behold, the what? The upright, for the end of that man is what? Peace. peace. Say the end, the end of that man, that man is, peace. is peace. But it's not going to be the same way with the wicked. Amen. They're not going to have the same peaceful end. Amen, somebody. Amen. When the saints get ready to go home to be with the Lord, they're not afraid. Not afraid to die, not afraid to go home and be with Jesus. Amen? Because they know there will be peace in the valley yeah. for me. Hallelujah. But the wicked, they scared, they calling on to the bed. <laughs> Amen? And even if they act like they're not, there's a terror in death for those that are not saved. Amen. But not for the saints. The end of that man is what? It's peace. But the transgressor shall be destroyed together, and the end of the wicked shall be what? Shall be cut off. Their expectation is going to be cut off. So the Bible, it acknowledges that sometimes people who are wicked do prosper for a season, but don't envy them because it's just for a season. Amen. Number two, prosperity. The next reason people get confused because they are only looking at material prosperity. And let me tell you something. People who are not saved are not prospering in every area of their life. And oftentimes, though they're prospering financially, their family isn't prospering. Glory to God. Their relationships are not prospering. Why? Because often they're introducing stuff into the relationship through sin that's causing problems. Amen, somebody. They're introducing things. They're introducing habits. They're introducing stuff that they do through the flesh that's hindering the prosperity, the blessedness, the peace of their family life. But material prosperity without righteousness really isn't prosperity at all. So from God's perspective, anybody that's unrighteous is not prospering. It may appear that they are prospering, but they're really not. Because little with righteousness is better than a lot of material stuff without right. That's the Bible perspective. So, you know, if you're looking at it from the worldly perspective, it might look like people who are not living right are prospering anyway, but not from God's perspective. Amen. Proverbs 16 and 8. Let's look at that. Proverbs 16 and 8, and we're going to see that. When you have it, say amen. amen. Oh, I see you got it. If you don't have it in your Bible, you got it on the screen. Just jot it down. Amen. Better is what? A little with righteousness than great revenue without right. Now, keep the scripture whole. Don't cut up this sentence. He didn't say better is little. <laughs> he didn't say it's better to be broke. He didn't say it's better to be badly getting along. That's not what he said. Keep it together now. But even if you don't have a lot, if you're righteous, you're better off than somebody with a lot that's unrighteous. Right. So if you're in the kingdom at all, you better than any, you, you better off than anybody in the world. Because everything we got here gonna, gonna eventually lose it anyway. Naked I came into the world, naked I'm leaving out of here. And if you leave out of here unrighteous, which could happen at any moment, at any time, Amen. you're in bad shape. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that what? Forget God. Amen, somebody. 
What does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his what? His soul. So he says, better is a little with righteousness than great revenue, what? Without right. And what the enemy would do, he would use material prosperity to really blind people to their overall poverty. That's what he does. He uses material prosperity to blind people. And if you're carnal, you're going to think just like the world. You think they're better off because they got a lot of money. Right. But if they ain't sin, you know, <laughs> they're not better off. And they are really poor. And the enemy, what he does, he wants the world to have wealth and pride. Because, you know, you can, you can, you can, you can almost null, uh, numb and blind yourself to a lot of emptiness if you can just keep on going to different stuff. And what the devil does, he uses that material prosperity to blind them to their poverty. And this blindness is called the deceitfulness of riches. Look at Mark chapter 4, verses 18 through 19. The what? The deceitfulness of riches. And what the deceitfulness of riches does, it makes people so comfortable in their sin that they reject the word. They reject the gospel. And they say, well, I'm doing pretty good without Jesus. But they're really not. They're just blind to the fact that they're not doing good. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. They're blind to the fact that they're not doing good. It's just like a person who got a whole lot of stuff, but it's all on credit. <laughs> they feel prosperous. They look prosperous. But they're really not prosperous because the bank owns everything. Huh? Amen. Bank owns everything. Owns the house. Owns the car. Amen. And if they got one of these rent to own, you know, bedroom suits, <laughs> own the bedroom suit, own the TV, I hope nobody's there. <laughs> but see, you're enjoying all this stuff, right. but in reality, you're still broke. Right. Amen, somebody. Amen. And that's the way, you know, the deceitfulness of riches, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you got it going on. But in reality, you really don't. Amen. Mark chapter 4, verse 18, it says, And these are they which are sown among thorns, which hear the word. Say, they hear the word. That means they're hearing the gospel. But because of this deception, they reject it. He says, And the cares of this world, and the what? The deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things enter in, choke the word and it, beco it becometh unfruitful. There's a deceitfulness of riches. And when the enemy can make you feel like you can leave God, I don't never come to God because you got stuff. You've been deceived by that. By those riches. Praise God. So the, the Bible is clear that material prosperity without righteousness isn't really prosperity at all. It's really a, a deception. Number three. Righteousness positions us. Now, this is the other thing that people miss, especially a lot of church folk, because they're, they're claiming the promise. Father, you said, you know, if I'm righteous, my house is going to stand. If I'm righteous, I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to be blessed in the field and blessed in the city, blessed going out, blessed coming in, praise God, because I am righteous. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, this is what they need to understand. Righteousness positions us for divine prosperity but does not produce divine prosperity by itself. Right. You see, there are other principles in the Bible that you got to apply. You can't just read one part. Right. Amen, somebody. Amen. Glory to God. You see, you know, you, 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 often we deal with things that have varying principles involved. You have a car. And if somebody says, you know, uh, if you want to drive, go in there and get the key off the, uh, the key ring there, and then you, 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 you can take this car, and, uh, and you can go wherever you want to go with it. Hmm. You go, get the key, say, I'm going to California. Put the key in there, car crank, you start driving, huh? and you 
get out on 49, and you're going north on 49, and you're going, you know, 65, driving the speed limit. Hmm? Then you get to about Memphis, and the car starts slowing down. And then the car stops. You say, I don't understand this. This man promised me I could take this car and go to California. <laughs> and here I'm not, I hadn't reached California. I'm in Memphis. And then this car, he said, I could take this car wherever I wanted to go. And here this car got me stopped by the side of the road. Now, see, he didn't keep his word. He told me this car would take me anywhere I want to go. Now, what was understood? You're going to put some gas in it. It would take you, but it's understood you're going to stop and get some gas. Right. Okay, you got that premise. Oh, I see. I'm on E. I need some gas. Okay. Flag somebody down, go to the, you know, get a gallon of gas, put it in there, <laughs> get to the service station, fill up. I'm on it now. Keep on driving. I'm going, went from 49 to 55, I'm on 55 highway, and I'm, 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 I'm booking. I'm booking. I ought to be in California in about three days. Keep on putting gas in. Going through Chicago now. Keep on putting gas in. How I get to the Canada border, Canadian border, he ain't trying to ask me for a passport or something. What else was understood when he said you could take this car and go wherever you want to go? You know where you're going. <laughs> That's understood. Huh? But the car will get you there. Yeah, right. Well, that's the way it is with divine prosperity. God gives us power to get there, but it's understood that we understand all the principles and we're going to involve them like direction. So you got to get direction from God because they that seek the Lord will not want for any good thing. He said, I guide you with my eye and teach you to prosper or to profit. So it's understood you're, you're going to meditate in the word day and night to do according to all that is written therein. For then you'll make your way prosperous and have good success. In other words, the, you, you can't just read, you know, you know, it is he that gives me power to get wealth and, that, and, and, and stop right there. Amen. Because there are principles involved. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Let's, 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 let's cover that so you'll know where to find that in your, in your Bibles. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. It says, but thou shalt what? Remember the Lord thy God, for it is what? It is he that gives you what? Power to get wealth. Power to get wealth. God gives you the power, but it's understood that you're going to use that power to get it. Right. Glory to God. So what are the other principles that are involved that, that sometimes people do not employ and wonder why it's not working for them? Proverbs 10 and 4. Proverbs 10 and 4. Let's go there right quickly. What does it say? It says, he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. Somebody said, that's a promise. That's a promise from God. Hallelujah. Amen. Claim it. Because it's a promise. I mean, the first part is just as true as the second part. This, this scripture is just as true as Deuteronomy 8 and 18. And what is it saying? If you slack, if you sloppy, if you slowful, huh? Amen. You show up late and leave early, do a box job, always turning your work in late. Amen, somebody. If you're slack, not doing stuff the way it's supposed to be done, he promises you. <laughs> he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. Come on, give God some praise for his promise. But look at the next part. But the hand of the diligent. Diligent. Do what you're supposed to do. Do it with excellence. Do it according to the, the method that is required. Apply yourself. You don't just go to college and pray. You go to college and go to class. 
Lord bless me. You say whatever I set my hands to do is going to prosper. Yeah, what you set your hands to do. Your hands are not in class when you in the dorm in the bed. Amen, somebody. So you got to apply this principle. You got to be diligent. Hebrews 6 and 12. Hebrews 6 and 12. That's another principle. It says that you be not what? Slowful, but followers, meaning imitators of them who through what? Faith and patience inherit the promises. So if we want to inherit the promises, we got to have what? Faith and patience. Faith and patience. Through faith and patience inherit the promise. So the promise that God's going to bless the righteous, that's a promise. But you got to have patience, endurance, in doing what is right, and you got to have faith. It's not automatic. According to your what? Faith. So be it under you. So to get the thing that God wants you to have requires the application of faith. Praise God. Unbelief and impatience will block prosperity. God gives you a plan of action. You got to have the endurance to see it through. You got to have the endurance to see it through. Now you got to know it's from God. Don't go down on the sinking ship. Amen, somebody. Sometimes we got some plans and it's not working because it's not God. And he don't want us to endure in that. He want us to let that alone. <laughs> Amen, somebody. We're not called to do it. We're not gifted to do it. We don't have the expertise to do it. It's not the plan of God for us to do it. Well, we just need to leave that to the side. Amen. Amen. But if it's God, he led you. It is, a, it is something that he wants you to be doing, praise God. He's given you a plan of action. You got to follow it through. And it takes endurance. And endurance is not necessarily being a workaholic. See, sometimes we don't endure because we overexert ourselves at certain seasons of our life. And then we, 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 we make ourselves sick where we can't endure. But see, sometimes enduring is, is, is over months and weeks. Which means you're, you're getting your rest, and then you're getting up and hitting it hard. And then you're getting your rest again. See, you got to work hard and play hard. Amen, somebody. Amen. Praise God. Because if you don't come apart and rest a while, you'll eventually just come apart. <laughs> Amen, somebody. So when I say diligence and when I say, you know, endurance, I'm not saying, you know, uh, overtasking yourself. But I'm saying keeping your pace. Keeping your pace, being steady, being steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord because you know that your labor is not in vain. Praise God. So, and, and, and a lot of people, they don't exercise in the faith. They don't go to God in prayer, believe in God, and then stand in faith until those things come into fruition. They don't operate, praise God. They have this stop and start, stop and start type mentality, and they don't endure. Praise God. Well, they're not going to prosper, even if they say. Amen, somebody. Not to the degree that they could. And then, a lot of times, you got to employ the principle of giving as well. Luke 6 and 38 says, give and it shall be what? Amen. Given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and what? Amen. Running over. Shall men do what? Give into your bosom. And with the same measure you meet, it shall be what? Measure to you again. So what we see here, praise God, there are other principles involved in prosperity. So don't just conclude that because somebody is living a holy life, praise God, uh, uh, that, that they, they're going to prosper automatically. And don't get confused when you see people who are saved, who love Jesus, praise God, but stuff that they do just don't seem to work out. Now, all of us go through a rock and a hard place every now and then. But you ought to come through it sometime. That's right. Amen. You shouldn't be in the midst of a, of, of a perpetual trial 365 days a year, year after year. Huh? I know Joel went through, but that wasn't all of his life. That was just a season of his life, but he, he came through it. Eventually, you ought to come out. Many are the afflictions of the Righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Thank you. Amen, somebody. Amen. Praise God, praise God. But if you employ those other principles, God will bring you through. God will bring you out, and you will what? Prosper. 
And what God wants us to show is that, you know, if, if you try to prosper on your own, you, you, you know, you may get some material prosperity. You're not going to ever get overall prosperity, and you may or may not get that. But if you follow God's plan, it's guaranteed. That's the beauty about it. It's promise. And God can't lie. God can't lie. He'll give you a plan of action that will work for you. Don't try to copy somebody else now. Amen, amen. Somebody else made it. They made, they, 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 they got blessed making cookies, praise God. But you can't boil water, praise the Lord. That's probably not God's plan for you. Don't just try to do what somebody else did. And certainly don't try to copy their recipe. <laughs> You're going to get sued. But what God wants you to understand is that the Bible principle is righteousness positions your family to prosper. Proverbs 12 and 7. Let's go back there. Pro righteousness positions your family to prosper. I'm just going to give you a few scriptures here, praise God, that's going to drive this home. We just read in our opening scripture. The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the what? Righteous. The righteous shall stand. The, 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 the contemporary English Bible says it like this. The wicked are destroyed and are not, but the family of the righteous will endure. How many want your family to endure? Mm, I don't know about you. I want my family to endure. I want my marriage to endure. I want my relationship with my children to what? Endure. And God said we can have that. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 3 and 33. Proverbs 3 and 33. God wants your family to last. And it can last. Proverbs 3.33 shows us again that righteousness positions the family to prosper. He said the Lord, the New Living Translation said the Lord does what? He curses the house of the wicked. Mm. <laughs> he curses the house of the wicked. See, some think God just not going to let it work. But he what? He blesses the home of the upright. He blesses the home of the upright. How many upright folks in the house? Amen. Well, just claim that, Lord, God is blessing my house. Thank you for blessing my house. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. I got a blessing. Hallelujah on my house. And you see the blessing of the Lord. You see, you're not blessed because you're rich. But the blessing of the Lord can make you rich. Because he said the blessing of the Lord make us rich and add us no sorrow. But you got to bless it before. The, you see, the blessing come before the material stuff came. See, Jacob was blessed when he was sitting there at his daddy's knee. And his daddy prayed the prayer and spoke the blessing. That's when he got blessed. But then the stuff started coming to him because he was blessed. Amen. And when God has spoken a blessing over your house, mm, just look for it. Look for it. God got a plan to bless you. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm not saying everybody's going to be multimillionaire, but your, your family will be blessed financially and then emotionally. You and your wife and husband, y'all can get along and love each other and have a happy marriage. You can be, you know, you can, you can have a family where you're glad to go to the house. Amen. Now, everybody don't have that now. Amen. amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. And their money kind of helps protect them from that because, you know, you know, you got a house big enough, she can have her bedroom and her wing of the house, and he can have his, and they don't even have to see each other. <laughs> Amen. He can take vacation wherever he wants to, you know, fool around, hide his devilment, you know, take money to do that kind of stuff. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord. But when people, praise God, are living for Jesus. It don't have to be like that. You can have a happy marriage and love each other. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. But it comes by righteousness. Say righteousness. righteousness. Psalm 112, verses 1 through 4. Psalm 112, verses 1 through 4. He says, praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who finds great delight in his command. That's why you got to come to church so you can be taught the word of God. You want your family to be blessed but don't want to go to church? Mm-mm, mm-mm. Be glad when it said, let's go to the house of the Lord. Yes, amen. amen. Make it your business to have your family in church every Sunday this year. Uh -huh. Amen. Yes. 
Praise God. Every Sunday, have your family at church where they can get, because you, it, because you understand that knowing the scripture is going to change your life. Yes. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord and delights great, greatly. Delights, finds great delight in God's commands. Amen? But how is going to bless his family? His children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. And then he said, it includes material prosperity. Wealth and riches are in his house. And his righteousness endures forever. Even in darkness, light. Huh? Even in darkness, light. Dark. He may go through some dark places, but I can see the sun peeping through the clouds. There's going to be some light somewhere. There's a bright cloud somewhere. God's going to make certain that light comes and you can see yourself. You may be in it, but you can see yourself coming out. Mm. Oh, really God. Hallelujah. 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 And then you just say, take me through, dear Lord. Take me through. Take me through, dear Lord. Take me through. Huh? But some people sing that like, I'm staying in, dear Lord, I'm staying in. I'm staying in, dear Lord, I'm staying in. I don't believe this trial will ever be over. I'm staying in, oh Lord, I'm staying in. Don't let me die in this trial, don't let me die. <laughs> they don't have that confidence that they're coming out. But the Bible said weeping men do it for a night. But joy is coming in the morning. The Bible said many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers them out of them all. Yeah. Hallelujah. This too will pass. Yeah. Yeah. It can't stay like this. Yeah. Hey, hallelujah to God. Yeah. It can't stay like this because light is going to arise in the midst of darkness for the upright. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hallelujah. Right. But he's applying the principle. He don't go through a trial and get stingy. And the reason light is going to come for him, because one thing about it, God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. And the reason light is going to come is because he's sown some light. He's sown some compassion. He's going through a dark place. He's going through a financially difficult time. He's going through a trial. He's going through a fiction. But look at what it says. It says, even in darkness, light dawns for the upright. But he tells us why. For the gracious and compassionate and righteous man. In other words, he's been gracious. Right. He's been compassionate. Uh -huh. And one thing about it, when you show compassion, when you need it, it's going to spring up. Yeah. When you show mercy, when you need some mercy, it's going to come back to you. Yeah. Blessed are the merciful, for they what? Yeah. They're going to obtain some mercy. And how many know every now and then you need some mercy? You need God to come through. You need God to forgive you and set you back, praise God, on the path. Hallelujah. But God will do it because you have sown it in your life. Hallelujah to God. And when you bless others, God will raise up somebody to bless you back. You may not need that thing today, but when you need it, it's coming back. Cast your bread on the water and after many days. Hey, hallelujah. You can't bring it back, but God will bring it back to you. He'll cause your ship to come in. He'll cause it to roll up on the shore exactly when you need it. He will cause men to give into your bosom. That's why he said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. He will, he's not dropping it out the sky, but he will use your boss, your employees, your customers, your clients, your friends, even the government sometimes, to cause it to come to you. But God is orchestrating this thing, and if you love God, all things will work together for the good to them that love God and are the call according to his purpose. Stand on the word of God, live holy, walk right, act right, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be. He didn't say could be. He didn't say it's likely. He didn't say it's a possibility or a possibility somewhere. Hallelujah. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be, shall be, shall be added unto you. 
Just don't worry about it. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Huh? Don't be envious of the workers of iniquity. Don't do that. Just trust in the Lord. Just trust in the Lord. And he's going to exalt you to inherit the land. Say amen, somebody. Everybody stand. Hallelujah to God. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Live right. Walk right. Do right. Act right. That's the path to prosperity. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. And if you act right, God will help you. If you do right, God will help you. But if you just be stubborn and just want to do things your way and don't want to change, huh? You won't have the divine assistance. Now, you want to be on your own. God will say, okay, I'll leave you alone. See what you can do by yourself. Amen, somebody. And that's just what the enemy wants you. Amen. But how many know that when God is helping you, you're like that little boy went into the store with his mama. It was one of these old-timey stores where, you know, they didn't ha just had a candy in the package. You remember those big, those big uh, jar, clear thing they had, one with cookies in it, and one with the oatmeal cookies and uh, lemon cookies, and then they had some with the big things of candy and everything in there. And, and, and then sometimes they had, and, 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 and the man, he told a little boy since he was just so nice, manly, waiting on his mama and everything, and, uh, and, 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 and that's, oh, you have such a nice son. Come here, son. Let me hold this down. You just reach your hand in there and just get as much as that can as you want. And the child wouldn't move. But son, I said, you can get as much, much as you want. Go and get it. He just looked at it. Wouldn't move. Kept his hand down. And then, you know, I had to ask him several times, son, you can, I told you, you can have it, Dad. Don't be scared. And he wouldn't move. He wouldn't say anything, but he wouldn't move. So the man just reached his hands in there, got it out, and gave it to the boy and put the thing back on the counter. And his mama, you know, all right, thank you, son. Thank you. He walked out. He told the boy, sir, why? <laughs> the man told you you could get the can, and why you just stand there and wouldn't reach your hand in there and get it? He said, he said, well, mama, I wanted him to reach his hands in there because his hand bigger than mine. <laughs> that boy knew, knew what side his bread was buttered on. He knew how to get that blessing. Huh? Why should you settle for what you can do on your own when your father's hands are bigger than yours and he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think hallelujah to god hallelujah he can bless your family spiritually materially naturally socially he can put your love life in a whole nother category but pastor you just don't know how bad my marriage is i tell you the truth I, i'm just holding on for salvation because if i could get out of this thing and still be saved i tell you i'd lead a day but God is so powerful. He said, you can speak to mountains and say, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And don't doubt in your heart, when a mountain gets cast, in, it's, it's, a, it, it, it's a whole nother thing when a mountain gets cast into the sea. Because when that mountain, do you not know that there are mountains under the ocean? I mean, great, big, huge mountains under the ocean. But the ocean is so much larger than the mountain that it just hides it. And what God is saying, when you get a mountain and it's cast into the sea, you look out over the sea, you don't even see where the mountain is. You can't look out over the Pacific or the Atlantic and see those mountains that's out there, but they're out there. But they've been cast into the midst of the sea. What I'm saying, when you exercise your faith, God can take that marriage and the stuff that's wrong with it and put it so far into the sea, praise God, that you can't even see it anymore. 
and that marriage don't look anything like it used to. Amen, somebody. It's more love than you ever thought it would be. Hallelujah. More happiness. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what God can do. That's what God will do. So why try to do it on your own? You can have better. Amen, somebody. Every head, body, right closed. Pastor, you said that's for the righteous. But I got to admit that I'm not really right. But you can be. You may be a sinner who never been saved, or you may be a backslider. You may be somebody who allow compromise and discouragement to come in. So you just said, well, just forget this. I'm, on, I'm not really going to be trying to live right. I'm just going to, you know, because. But you know what the Bible said? That we confess our sin. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And he'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You can qualify. All you have to do is just say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. Every head, body, every eye closed. You're present here today, and you're not a born-again believer, but you want to be. You're not right with God, but you want to be. I want you to lift your hand wherever you are. I want to pray for you. Lift both hands up. I want to pray for you and pray with you. God, I forgive you. In just a split second, he'll forgive you. All sins will be forgiven. I see one with your hand raised up. Keep it raised. Keep it raised. Keep it raised. Hallelujah. Keep it raised. God wants to do a work in you. Hallelujah. 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 There may be another on the altar uh, who's not on the altar. Praise God. Say, well, Pastor Scott, I'm saved. I'm born again. But I, I, ha I have to confess, my, my mind has not really been as firm in righteousness as it should be. And at times I, 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 I doubt and I let, I let compromise come in. I, I need strength. I need strength. I need God to strengthen me to really hold my course when, when temptation comes. Hold my course when the pressure is on. Hold my course when I get discouraged and not let the enemy trick me again. Give me strength. That's you. Raise those two hands as well. Raise them. Raise them. I want, you, I want to pray for you too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, you promise in your word that if we come to you, you will in no case cast out anytime we come to the throne of grace you are faithful and just to forgive and cleanse us from all unrighteousness you're faithful to give us the strength that we need give us mercy that we need so we come to you now asking you to forgive us forgive us father of compromise Forgive us, Father, of every sin, and let the blood cover it now. Thank you, Father, for giving me a chance to be forgiven and to receive by faith the righteousness of Jesus Christ. I know because Jesus died and he was buried and rose again through him, all my sins are forgiven. And a new life is resurrected in my life today. I believe unto righteousness. Now I boldly say, I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise here. That means you're one of those righteous folks. And you qualify. You qualify. You qualify. Amen, somebody. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Whatever you need for your family. You need someone to touch and agree with you. If you got saved today and you need strength and you need God to, 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 to break a yoke in your life, that when we lay hands on you, the, the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. If you need healing in your body, you can come now to the altar. The Bible says we lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Praise God. Come quickly if you need a touch. Hallelujah.
Praise God. Oh, randa rabo shanda. Reki be kamo rondo rabo shikiri be anamasha. Hallelujah. The Bible said, if men are sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over them, anointing with the Lord. In the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up. Hallelujah. Mm. The Bible said, We lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We bind every spirit of infirmity. We command you to go now in the name of Jesus. We command every spirit of infirmity to go now. We pray, Father God, for the healing of these, your people. Oh, Randarabosha, that you would touch them by the power of God. Hallelujah. If you need someone to touch and agree with you on something other than healing, praise God. I want you to raise your hand. I'm going to send someone to pray specifically with you. Uh, Sister Jameson, if you would go pray with one of those sisters. Sister Scott, will you come and pray with one of these sisters? Minister, Elder, you would just pray with Brother Miller, praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Someone else needed to agree? Praise God. Sister Hicks, if you would go and be in agreement. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who came for healing now? Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing too hard for God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I anoint this, my dear sister, with all in the name of the Lord. And you said we'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And I believe as I lay hands today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you touch and heal her body. You know what it is, and there's nothing too hard for you. Lord, use your power. Amaze the doctors. Give her full recovery. Whatever is needed, Father God. We don't look at the symptoms. We don't look at the name of it. But we look to Jesus right now. Because we know that there's nothing too hard. Oh, Basha, nothing too hard for him. Build up her faith. Continue to make it strong. Don't let her faint in her faith. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, I set my faith in a Oh, Basha. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel that power going out now. I thank you for it right now. I thank you for it right now. I pray. Hallelujah. You begin to fix it right now. Let her begin to amend right now. Hallelujah. We bind the devil. We bind every spirit of infirmity now. And we look to you, Father God. And we claim that healing by Obasha in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 What do you need, young man? Your health. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, sir, touch him right now. Make him every with whole. We rebuke the enemy right now. We lay hands on the sick. And we believe. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for your healing virtue. Touch, touch now. In Jesus' name, give him a full recovery. Let him be every with hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, as he stands in proxy for his wife, we pray, Father God, the prayer of faith, that you would touch her where she is and make her every with hope. We bind the enemy right now. We pray for a speed of recovery. We pray that you would heal her. Do it instantly in the name of Jesus. We pray for it by faith. Thank you, Father God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, he won't give up on you. 
Righteousness is going to pay off. No matter what you are going through and no matter what your family is going through. Even look like, you know, the, the spouse won't do right or the children don't do right. You hold your course. Hold your course in righteousness. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Amen. Because the house of the righteous will stand. Hold your course. Amen. Hold your course. Keep on doing right. Amen, somebody. Am I saying you're going to make them do right? I'm not saying that. Amen. But God's going to bless you if you hold your course. Amen, somebody. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to release you. Praise God. Trust to see everyone on tonight at 730 for prayer. We'll be here for an hour of prayer. Looking for God, we'll be praying for our families, but as well, we'll be praying for uh, God's agenda for this, this, this year. Amen. Amen? Praise God. Thank God for our young people. Praise God. And I and, uh, want all the young people, right after the service, you need to um, uh, meet with Sister Linda uh, and Sister Corinthia, okay, to get something. Oh, yeah, Sister Linda had to go. Praise God. To get something from Sister Corinthia. So all the young people see Sister Corinthia. Uh, raise your hand so they can see where you are. Praise God. Get with her right after the service. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Please come back tonight. Praise God. We want every member to come. Praise God. It's an hour of prayer. Praise God. Peter and John went up to the temple for the hour of prayer. And every now and then we need to do that. Praise God. It's don't, you can't relegate prayer to the prayer warrior. Because prayer was made of the church, the Bible said, without ceasing. And that's when God released Peter, praise God, from that imprisonment. Amen? You can't find the ministry of the prayer warrior in the Bible. There's no select group that God said, these are the only ones I won't pray. But he said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek God's face, turn from their wicked ways, he'll hear from heaven, he'll forgive sin, and he will heal the land. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And we're going to be praying. We've been interceding each day for families. Praise God. We're going to continue to do that. 6.30 a.m., 12.30 p.m., and 6.30 p.m. So 20 minutes, catch one of those calls. We're not asking you to be on three times a day like Daniel. Amen. But if you can catch one of those calls, be in agreement with us. We're going to be a praying church because we know that when God's people pray, great things happen. Amen. Was that all I need to say? Praise God. Father God, bless your people as we go down from this place. Cover us and keep us and let no harm hurt anything you befall us. Shield us and protect us. Bring us back safely at your own appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen.